Hey folks, Steve here with another Dark Summer video. Uh, this video might be an oddball one. We'll see what we end up with. Um, this would ordinarily just simply be turn three, but um, the aftermath of the last turn was pretty, pretty dim looking for the Germans. Um, and, uh, you know, Ted had reached out to kind of talk about kind of where things would stand in the game. And, and, and obviously, I mean... <laughs> um, there's definitely some challenges. Uh, I think if you look at, like, the Allies are going to go first. They, they could go, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, and be approaching El Franchet pretty quickly. The rest of these guys, you know, maybe beginning to outflank the German positions. Uh, and... You know, in the East, things aren't looking fantastic for the Germans either. Um, now, um, what Ted had mentioned was, you know, uh, unless the next weather chit drawn is a storm turn, then it's probably worth a reset or to start over because the Allies are going to win. And I can definitely see that. Um, I think their advantage in victory points is pretty strong, and then it's a matter of, you know, uh, do, can the Germans hold on for any amount of time and then try to rush units in very, very late game off map uh, to get victory points? And, you know, the Allies could simply be pushing them, working to push them simply off the map, period. Um, either by eliminating the unit or, you know, whatever. Force, forcing them off, but even if the Germans get victory points for retreating units off map, if at any point there aren't any German units on the board, um, the Allies win, unless it's turn 10 and they're making their final exit. Um, and what Ted had said was that, you know, Cherbourg doesn't necessarily, you know, maybe on average will fall turns three or four or something like that, um, or, or later, right, that's possible too, but... Um, you know, me getting it on turn two, that's pretty dramatic. Um, and then the other thing he really pointed out was the Germans, um, basically getting pushed back off of, uh, the Orne River and pretty far back that that's a big deal. And, and obviously the allies didn't historically take the whole city there, uh, for a long while. And I think this is going to be, you know... I think this is one of those things where it's like, well, I I could probably break down all the bad moves I had as the Germans. Um, one of them was not properly uh, putting a unit in these hexes over here uh, because the Allies, you know, the Allies could cross the river. And if they can cross the river, they can project Zox behind the river. Um, you know, assuming they have a supply line, they're all in good shape otherwise. You know, there's no danger of being out of supply and thus very weak and easily destroyed where they could be projecting Zox in the backfield of the Germans in the city, right? And that, that was the problem. You had a unit that could cross here and still had enough movement points to actually cause a problem uh, because the Germans don't project a Zox across the major river, right? So if they can make the crossing un, un, uh, molested, they, they could operate behind the river so you know the case where the british were able to kind of come and out really what happened is they outflanked the city um they came around uh and were able to um present enough of a threat that they, that that whole bunch of guys in the city were going to get surrounded that they had to pull out pull back now maybe what they should not have done is backed away from the river and they should have done everything they could to stay on the east side of the river not backed up a hex right I, that was probably a major mistake they, they they wanted to retreat to form a better line but leaving that river just means you know that they have a tremendous uh weakness in everywhere else that they can attack and that's really i think the compounded issue in that sector of the game map is like they just they just couldn't go anywhere that was safe, it felt like, because of that outflanking maneuver. So 
I would say in the next game, next playthrough, if I do restart here, that the Germans will need to be really careful about protecting those sides of the major river. Um, the, the blocking of Zox is so critically important um, in terms of what the Allies can do and how they operate um, to cause problems for the Germans. And I, and I have to make sure we hold that river. Um, so the other things that I didn't do right, I think, as I'm looking at the game map, is... You know, the isolation of Cherbourg occurred because I, well, I guess a couple of things. Ted had mentioned bringing more units out of the Cherbourg box in the early part of the game. Basically emptying it except for uh, the garrison. That, that is the, the strong garrison that can sit there. Now, what that would have meant if I had done that is that more guys could have come down here earlier and sort of helped line up, you know, this line that sort of was shaped like this, basically. And and that would have maybe kept the Americans hemmed in longer. And the reason I didn't do that, or the reason I didn't pull more units out, I was thinking, I'm like, well, if if the if the Americans can break through the line up here somewhere, it doesn't matter, you know, this somewhere, and they can get up into here and they can get into the shared root box. Well, if the Sherbrooke box is mostly empty, that's going to increase the likelihood that we just force the cities to surrender that way and we wrap it up even sooner than I thought, you know, was going to happen. Um, that turned out to maybe be the, the mistake, I guess, because you could still try to get German units back in there, I guess, depending on how the chit order came out. Um, but it is true that, like, whatever units I pulled out and brought down here... Well, if Cherbourg falls and they are left down here, they could still try to get down here and protect the coast. Um, but because I had such a deep, you know, western cut down here to uh, La Say and created that huge isolation, you know, it, it in, in this particular playthrough, it didn't necessarily matter. We were just too far, too far up. And really, when you look at the road lines, like, it doesn't take that much to get down here, right? I mean, there are roads that the U.S., the Allies can use to get down here. Um, they have a couple different avenues to get down here. And if they're forcing all of these guys to go up to the Scherzberg box, um, you know, then then it, you know, then the German has to hope that the Americans just don't dedicate the resources up there to do it. Um, but but I guess you know, again, the the advantage to having pulled more guys out would have been they could have escaped down here south and then we wouldn't have this huge gap here we would have maybe a couple of guys present you know rejecting some level of Zox having some defense in the bocage and and you know wouldn't be a complete S, you know effed up situation um but that's you know I think that's all we can really account for here um you know, were there any other big major mistakes? Um, I don't know about that. I mean, I think I played competently as the Allies. I mean, I don't think they made any major mistakes. They they systematically executed what they needed to execute, where they needed to execute it, um, and, and they did pretty well in doing that. Um, I do think as the Germans, I just couldn't couldn't quite grasp the best things to do. But, you know, I, as I say that, I should point out, just so folks understand, like, the chit order was tricky, right? The the allies went and they went first with initiative and that first move exploited a hole in a line and the British were outflanking the Germans. The Germans then used the reaction chicks. They had to do something, but they only got the two reaction chits this turn, okay? And somebody in the comments saying said, well when you use that reaction chit too early, well I only get two and I used one right away to try to stop a major event. And I had to save this one for last because 
Um, it was the last German move I was going to have, period, right? The chit order matters in this game system. You have to know what your capabilities are as the turn evolves and blossoms out to, you know, whatever the game state is. So it was like I had React, and then I started pulling German chits. Um, and when you only get three regular German chits in a turn, it was like, bam, bam, okay, well... I didn't know I was going to get the second German shit right away. I didn't know that was going to happen, but it was like I needed to do some combat. I needed to fix the situation. I did that. I got lucky tactically and was able to move and sort of try to figure something out with my line. But then it was a drought for a while, right? And the British went, the British went, then the Americans went. And the problem was when we drew this next shit, you could say, well, why didn't you play the reaction shit any sooner? Well, because it's the last one. It's the last one, right? Um, and I knew there was a crap ton of U.S. chits still in the cup. So it's like, okay, well, if I just use up, if I use up all of my reaction chits, what this is going to do is going to give the allies, just based on the way the chits have come out, yeah, the, the Americans are going to go da-da-da-da-da, and then at the beginning of turn three, they're going to get the first shit again, and they're going to, you know, get that sort of what in WIF we call the double turn in, in OCS. It's the double turn, you know, this critical thing where you can sometimes go twice in a row and you can, you know, expand upon the advantage you have <clears throat> gained with the first action with the second action right away and knock your opponent off balance. Well, that's what that was the constant fear was like, OK, I drew the, this last German shit. What can I do with it? Try to make the best of it. Because I know the rest of these chits are all going to be American, and I have to pick some time, some place, to try to do a reaction. Um, so, in terms of the chit play, which I don't control, I think I did everything that I could with the amount of limited information I had at the time, right? Sort of that fog of war. I don't know how these chits are going to go. They went in a way that in a in tunnel vision maybe looked okay at the, you know, zoomed out operational strategic level. You know, maybe I didn't play the reaction chits in the right place, but just based on what I knew was going to happen, I did what I could. I think my, my, my real mistakes as the German uh, player really boil down to the, the positional uh setup of my units where i chose to defend where i failed to block the river crossing uh at uh colum colum oh god I, i'm gonna have a hard time pronouncing that uh colum bell over here um or i guess it was one hex north of colum bell here uh the the fact that that crossing was allowed to happen um or i didn't i didn't move units in there enough to really protect it meant that, you know, the the German position became untenable, right? I, I, I feared being outflanked and surrounded, and so I pulled back, but pulling back was still a problem. And, and, and in some ways, that means the Germans kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't, but but what I should have, the, the way to escape that would have been to better clog up the river crossing hexes so that that doesn't become an issue. Um, but to be honest, and, and, and this is sometimes just the way the die rolls, I rolled very. I, I rolled pretty well for combats around here, which opened up this flat area, which just provides the allies with high movement factor, a lot of capability to move around through here and use the roads and everything else. So, I mean, it, I, I certainly poor play. I think the poor play was compounded with some excellent die rolls on the allied side. I really didn't attack much at all as the Germans. So. If I'm not attacking much at all as the Germans, you know, and it's all die rolls basically for the Allies, and I roll really well as the Allies, I, I systematically rolled well most of the time, either four, fives, or sixes, not much of the time, I think, if I'm just going off of my memory, which is imperfect, but there you go. Um, I, I think the Allies just had a really good game. They just had a really good start. They had a really good way to approach it, and, and I do think I made smart decisions as them on the attack and and i just i do prefer to be the attacker i guess in a game where you know i'm i'm choosing where to go and where to head to and, and defense is just tougher because you're you know you're always stuck in this trap of either denuding your forces um 
trying to spread out and cover ground, or do you want to have a counter punch arm? And here in this case with the Germans, it's like they just never had enough forces this early in the game to actually do a counter punch yet. They're waiting on turn three reinforcements. So um, and with the due diligence here, I'm going to pull the next weather chip and let's just see what it, what it would be. And I pull it and, oh gosh, that's a sun turn. Okay, so uh, if we have a sun turn, just so folks understand what that would mean. Um, again, uh, Germans could not use the road MP cost, so no road movement except for reinforcing units. Prepared offensives, allied defenders uh, get the column shift to the left. Uh, we can do carpet bomb if we wanted to. We would get tactical air, naval support. Um, I mean, this would be, yeah, this would be very bad. Because you would have, like, these guys over here could move one, two, three, four, five, six. That's as far as they could get. And then these American units are going to go, whoosh, and they're going to use the roads. And they're going <laughs> to they're gonna just totally wrap up the German line and, and have this, you know, half the map shut down already within the first couple of turns. Um, so with it being a sun turn next, um, and knowing how this is going to go, uh, I do I do think we are going to need to reset. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, for the rest of this video, um, I am going to... Uh, have set up the game again. I will reset the game. I will play through uh, basically turns one and two off camera. Or I'll, what I'll do is I'll play turn one. I'll show you the results of that. And then I'll show uh, turn two, uh, the results of my redux, you know, turn two. And then we will pick up with turn three in the rest of the video, I guess. And, and we'll see what is ultimately different uh, in the game and, and go from there. So yeah, let's do that. Um, so goodbye game one. This, this was an allied, uh, triumph. We'll see what happens next. Okay. So here is the aftermath of the first turn all over again. Uh, the chits came out in a different order. Um, I think a little German sided and just in terms of what they could do, um, their actions were more spread out so they could more easily react to and fro. Uh, to what the Allies were doing. I did vacate Cherbourg except for the garrison. So we have, you know, something here a little sturdier than the last game. But the weakness that the Germans have is along here. Um, they really, you know, these guys got to come up and help defend because right here is very weak. Um, I mean, the Americans are a little worn out in a few places, but generally it, it is weaker. Um, and the Germans have the reinforcements coming up to help, but things make it dicey. Um, the British did push the Germans back a little bit uh, away from the, the sort of west area of Khan, but the Germans are in here with SS units defending the city, so that's going to be tough. Um, we did manage to get some more uh, protection for the river, um, but the British made a, a concerted effort to push through here, and so um, what we're really dealing with now is uh, a pretty significant uh, sort of push over the river and, and against light German defense. Now, I'm reasonably confident um, as I look at the map that, like, this is still, like, this wider river is still major river. Um, it didn't become impassable or anything just because the water is thicker in that particular spot. So I believe that the British could cross if they had the movement points, and they did. Um, so they had, you know, made an attack over here, pushed the Germans back, dealing with all sorts of stuff. So the little sneaky get close to Khan on the other side, not going to work, but the British are still going to work on outflanking the city. That's sort of how they can break it loose is if they outflank it, make it untenable, they can get down across the river again like they did last game. Uh, they would like to do that, uh, but stout German defense will make that difficult. So there we go. That's that's the redux turn one over. I will start turn two. Now I've already uh, pulled the uh, 
the leather chit, and it actually turned out to be a sun turn, um, which is pretty significant um, because it's going to keep the Germans from using road movement and provide the Allies all the, the stuff that they needed. Um, the Allies are going to choose to do a combat chit as their initiative chit and likely paired with a prepared offensive because what the Americans are hoping to do is just crack the German line here. And they would still like to cut this uh, at, a, at a supply. I mean, that's truly, if they can achieve it, um, then they're going to want to do it. Uh, so, um, oh gosh, you know, and I realized that I forgot to do some additional American reinforcements. And so uh, I will need to add these guys uh, and that kind of sucks that that might have affected the very last uh, action for their turn, which was movement. Um, but, well, now we'll just have to do. It'll be fine. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I'll fix that. I'll play through turn two, and I'll show you guys the results of turn two. We'll be back. Okay, so here we are after the end of turn two. Um, and yeah, I'm sure you can tell the difference if you looked at the beginning of this video and you looked at the spot on the board. Now, it is different. Now, I'd still say the Germans are getting pressed uh, pretty pretty hard, actually. Um, but I do think that it is uh, much better for the Germans in general, um, though uh, there are some pretty nasty things that are going to be occurring uh, probably in the very next, <laughs> the beginning of turn three. Um, so while I'll say it's, it's certainly better than the last game, I do think the Germans are still having a tough time of it. So let's talk about where things stand right now. Um, Cherbourg is not cut off yet. Uh, we, we pushed, I didn't have a strong of a push this way, and I did try to push through here, but the Germans obviously countered that. I knew that that was weak. And we had some moments where we were going to snake down through here and isolate Cherbourg, but it didn't really happen. Um, and so I do have a heavy American push through here uh, with the hope that we disrupt. We actually got uh, St. Saint Lo. I don't know if that's a low. If it's low or it's low or something, uh, French pronunciation, I'm not exactly sure. Um, and I feel bad, but you got to understand, I read a lot of books, but uh, those books don't always have pronunciation guides, so be that as it may, I don't know how that's pronounced, but uh, the Americans are in there with one of their tank brigades. Now, this is a pretty stark difference between what I did with Cherbourg and what I did, you know, in the last game than here, where I sent that armor up to Cherbourg, and they really provided the bulk of the combat factors that allowed us to roll the Cherbourg combat. Here, I'm focused on using them to traverse the map and cause all sorts of major issues. Uh, for the Germans, um, just to have extra firepower down here to chop up reinforcements. Um, but I still have a pretty good shot at creating an isolation. It's just I may not have the same amount of strength I would have had before to uh, to actually take Cherbourg. So this could be a major mistake on my part to send the armor down here so soon, um, but we are getting closer and closer to isolating the uh, the peninsula, so we're, you know, maybe, you know, maybe next turn we'll be able to do that, but the timer is ticking for the Allies. Um, this really is significant, though, because uh, if you look at kind of the way the map is situated, this is a very important road junction. So now, if I wanted to, I could send these fast-moving units uh, down, you know, down the roads this way um, to a point because of the barrier, but we could, you know, we, we've got a different, a lot of different axes of advance if we wanted to use the roads um, and I had to be super careful to remember that the Germans could not use road movement after the reinforcements came in or only the reinforcements could use road movement and there might have been a couple spots where I screwed that up but I can't remember now as I played through but the, the main thing is um, that you know the Germans are having a rough time of it due to the weather we did actually have one instance where an entire American division was destroyed um, all six steps because they attacked um, a, a stack of flak, a uh, flak division, and a flank group or flak group, and I, I ended up getting a, a exchange result, which means you know the six steps of flak guns were destroyed 
at the cost of the six steps of the U.S. infantry. And I, and I think I played that right. I mean, that, I believe that's how the EX result uh, plays out. And, may, and maybe I, I missed something, but I, I believe that's the case. Um, so rather than last game where the Allies really didn't lose anything, so far the Allies lost the whole division on that attack. But what it did is it opened up a gap right around here, which has allowed the rest of these American forces to kind of stream in. So, you know, we lose a division, <laughs> a whole division, apparently, but um, the German situation is, is tough. And that's the American side. Um, for the uh, British and Canadians, you can see we don't quite have the epic flank down through here that we did last time. The Germans have done a good job kind of falling back to the Bocage, holding some, some critical spots with pretty good units that they've enabled the, the line to hold. But as we showed at the end of turn one, that, that sort of lodgement over the river, uh, the British have managed to expand upon that. They've pushed the Germans back. Whoops. Um, and we now have, uh, we actually have a case where some outflanking can take place. Um, and that's, that's going to be major, major issue, a major, major issue for uh, the Germans going into this next turn, because what I could do with the first initiative chip is pick a British move and go one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, um, and sort of like created this huge encirclement behind these guys, which will make you know, it won't necessarily cut these guys out of supply unless I do a hard cut this way, which I might do either either way, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's where we would have to stop. So they would, well, I guess they could count supply through here. So it, it's going to be awfully close. Like there's going to be a case where we could actually surround uh, the city and put it out of supply for the Germans, which would mean that all of these SS units stuck in there or in trouble. Now that's very similar to what happened in the last playthrough that I had to restart where the city just gets outflanked and there's no way to hold it. So I think, you know, that <laughs> knowing, like I know that's the only way I, I can take the city. Like I can't just take it fighting into it. It's not going to happen. I'm going to waste too many steps. If I outflank it and make it untenable, then that's the way to do it. And so far, like I said, I've got um, a really good, you know, getting the, the fact that the airborne land here and have control of this bridge so we have a way to get over here at the beginning of the game is super key um, to forcing the Germans back. And I guess if I ended up having to restart, I would try to figure out how to defend this better. But I think I did, you know, you've only got so many units. you got to do what you can. Um, but I think this is a this is a game state that we could play off of and continue on in a turn three. Um, so I will do that here. So um, here we are at the end of turn two. And now, guys, in the next clip, we will start looking at the beginning of turn three. Okay, so for turn three, we're going to go ahead and pull the next weather chit. So it's obviously been very good weather for the Allies. Uh, you know, we had the showers, of course, but the sun weather uh, was really great for smashing the uh, the Germans and ensuring that they really can't counterattack, um, and, and I'll say, I don't think I've actually, like, really tried a really good German attack the whole game, maybe, like, once, um, we attacked the British to try to chip away at them, but that was it, so we'll, uh, we'll pull the next shit and kind of see what the situation is, and the weather will be, uh, showers again, so the Germans get a little bit of relief here, um, this turn, is showers. So what the showers mean? Uh, each ally tactical air marker may be used once per turn. Naval support is available. Um, and really importantly, the ally defenders don't get the extra shift on defense. Um, carpet bombing I don't think is allowed. Uh, no prepared offensives, though I think they can still do combined actions or combined, combined moves. Um, but the Germans can use road movement. That's probably the most significant thing, honestly. I mean, you, truly, like, you, if you find yourself unable to use the roads, um, everything moves at a snail pace. The bocage is not easy to move through. Um, it, it just becomes really difficult. So this is really important 
uh, for the Germans to be able to um, operate here. And while I would love to use the initiative chit to kind of work to isolate uh, Cherbourg, I, I do think that the British need to move first and they need to move quickly uh, to create, you know, to make use of the breakthrough situation they have um, and disrupt the uh, disrupt disrupt the Germans um, for sure. And I think we've got a couple different ways that we can do that. Uh, and it's all going to be pretty pretty nasty for the Germans. So we'll see what that looks like in a minute. Uh, first, we do have to do replacements. So the replacements for showers is the Americans get one mech, one infantry, the British get one armor, and the Germans get one infantry. So I'll just off camera figure out where I think those replacements are most needed. And then uh, we'll, uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about action phase stuff. Okay, here we are after the British move. Um, like I said, guys, it's, it's happening again, getting across the east part of the river. Um, I've been able to make happen. Uh, and you can see, you know, we were able to kind of come, like, because of the lack of Zox over the major river, I had some British that could slide over here, one who went around the long way, and then these guys, as reinforcements, uh, the British rolled high for reinforcements, could zoom on over here and kind of help <laughs> cut, you know, the Germans by road are going to have to go all the way around here or traverse the flat plain. Um, and we have got uh, a pretty significant issue to resolve. Now, I took a gamble as the Germans. I already played the first reaction shit, and I failed spectacularly. I had these guys attack here to create a breakout where this would have forced the British to retreat um, and then they could have reestablished something, but they rolled, they had a 50% chance of forcing a retreat on the British and uh, they they failed to do that. Um, they failed to do that. And so they used their, uh, they, 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 they used everything they could that made sense to force this guy to retreat and move and they got a no result. So these guys are stuck now, I could have alternatively had them emergency with withdrawal. Um, now, they can't cross the river because they're mechanized, but they could have gone here to here, and that would have at least gotten them to some level of safety, but they would have been stuck over the wrong side of the major river. So, once again, bad situation for the Germans, um, way ahead of schedule in terms of taking the city. Uh and I guess as the Germans, I just need to do a better job of defending the east side of the river. I mean, here wasn't the problem like it was last time. You know, we had a stout enough defense. But over here, we were just able to make use of that crossing just a little too easily. Um, you know, the, the paratroopers, again, being on the other side of the bridge, that just really, really helps us uh, sift units into the area and, and begin to pose problems. Um, and now we're pushing... You know, we have a very strong possibility of shutting down the reinforcement hexes over here and sort of uh, beginning to compress the Germans' ability to respond. So now we're left to go to the cup, and we'll see what happens. Um, I'm very worried about the German situation right now. Uh, the only saving grace being that the Germans can move through the city because uh, there are no enemy Zocks into the city. So there's still a chance those SS units can get out, but it depends on what we draw. Um, so pulling the chit, we do get a German, I think we got to do movement here. Um, so the Germans do have a chance to pull out of the city. Um, it's going to be a little wonky as they try to do that. Um, but, but they can. It just... They shut the door, so they've really um, are forcing the the Germans back this way, uh, which is really the worst. So um, the Germans are going to do a move. They're going to try to figure out some way to fix the situation. We're also going to get some reinforcements, so we'll show the aftermath of that here very soon. Okay, here we are after the German move, and the reinforcements are, are strong. We're able to get in a bunch of these SS units that are quite strong. They're trying to come up the road. Um, this guy's really meant to come over here. These guys are trying to figure out a way to get. Um, they have to move carefully and slowly because of emergency withdrawal and moving through the cities. Uh, they want to get across the river. Um, we have reinforcements coming up this way. 
we still have this huge gap that we just there's no real way to solve this problem you know trying to move units as best as i can just to to maintain something um resembling a uh uh well <laughs> okay so i'm i i am gonna i have to change this um there we go yeah i think that's the better move um, because if I had moved him here, there's no Zox, and then these guys are going to wrap around. So you can see there's still this huge gap. I, I just can't I can't really solve that right now. Um, this guy's still going to get surrounded again, very likely. Um, but you know it's you know like in a lot of war games, you get in a position where if like you just can't save yourself, each you know weakened part of your front is just going to continue to be. An exploited weakness and um, once again the British have figured out a way to penetrate and get into the fillet plane uh, around there um, you know fillet is back here but uh, this whole area you know they're able to bust into there and I mean they, they'll have to decide I guess at some point do they go off to the eastern exit box you know have they shut the Germans down enough that they feel like they can go do that maybe not until the later stage of the game but the better uh, position they have on the map, the you know, better off they'll be in the long run. So uh, we'll go to the cup and we'll pull what uh, comes next, and we pull uh, another German move for combat. Well, I think movement. This is kind. Of, this is sort of a lucky pull. It helps us for the immediate problem, um, and even may give us the ability to counterattack a little bit in some places. But the real issue is. If we do this as a movement, we're not going to get any more movement for the rest of the turn. So it's like, what will the Americans do to screw us up? But I think we have to do movement. Um, I'll go ahead and roll reinforcements. Uh, only get two or half of what's left. And in terms of formations, I think we've still got a number. Okay, so I think there's like five formations so we're gonna end up still with two coming in so um, I'll work that I'll do the movement and we'll see where things stand again okay here we are at the second German move um, so much better shape I mean we're containing the uh, the British a little bit um, now the nice thing about these panzer divisions is that they are very strong so just being attacked by the British won't get them probably too terribly far but they have enough striking power that they can hit something that is off by itself. So if the Germans are so lucky to get their next shit drawn, they can hit a couple of these British stacks and even some American stacks over here um, to reduce them. Uh, we did move these guys up through here to kind of provide some, some safety for these weakened German units. Um, so still trying to hold on uh in in good locations getting into defensive terrain where we can um but you know that no matter what we do there's still german weakness no matter what we get onto the board uh we just need more 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 uh to be able to really make use of what we what we have um so we'll we'll draw the next cup at this point we still have uh, one reaction shit so We'll probably hold that reaction shit towards the end of the turn. But the uh, allies are going to get some actions uninterrupted for a while, and I might just have to accept that as the Germans. Um, and uh, okay, we actually get that's man, that's weird. Three German shits in a row. Um, that's uncommon, but we got it. So, what do we want to try to do here? Um, well, I need to understand supply real quick quick double check to see if that American unit is going to get halved um, let's see I think for supply purposes um, let's see okay so it to the the Okay, so for the attrition phase, it doesn't matter. But for here, 
This unit is out of supply, which um, is going to weaken it, I think. Let me just double check that. That's worth validating. Um, combat strength is halved. Okay, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Okay. So, are they, are we going to attack here? Probably. So this is a four in a city. We are able to attack with, let's see, 22, 26, 35 to 4. Uh, well, that just comes down to 6 to 1. And then uh, two shifts for the city. It's 4 to 1. The Germans will take that. They rolled a 3, so it's a DR star. So they would take a step loss and then have to retreat, but they're going to retreat through uh, Zox. And so this American armor unit Holding uh, St. Lowe is actually eliminated. Um, so good on, good on the Germans for that. Um, they will advance after combat, and they're quite happy with that result, I think. Um, the other combats are going to be over here in the British sector. So it's a matter of wondering, you know, will we attack here? Um, Well, we could, let's see, what's the best way to do this? Um, I wonder, we have artillery now as the Germans, and we could use it. Um, oh, only available during rain or storm turns. Okay, never mind. Um, I would like to try to hit these guys here uh, somehow. Um, so we could do a, what do we got, a 20, 20 to 4 is 5 to 1 odds, 5 to 1 odds, and then we shift twice the city to 3 to 1. I mean, I think that's worth a shot. Roll the two, we get a retreat. Um, so let's see, he can retreat one, two, I guess, and could advance after combat. I think we can try to do that. And over here, um, I think we would have, let's see, 24, 27. Twenty-seven to six or twenty-seven to five. Beef. Whoops. Beef. Four to one. Straight up. Or, huh, I think we go for these guys because that's worth victory points, right? So 27 to 5, it's 5 to 1. The British don't really have anything that they can throw in to help at this point. And we roll the 3, and that is an EX. So we do eliminate uh, some paratroopers. Um, I may not record the victory points right away, but um, that's important. Uh, so an EX, so one, two step losses. So we'll do one, two, I think it's a two step unit. Yeah. One, two, and then um, if we advance after combat, I don't think that does us any good. So we'll stay where we're at. Um, and that's all the German combat. So yeah, I mean, we, we, hit back a little bit, I mean, a little bit successfully, um, enough that we killed a paratrooper, which is important. I think that would net us, maybe I will just mark the victory points, uh, each allied paratrooper unit eliminated. Um, so that is one, that is one victory point for the Germans right now. 
and uh, that means that the victory points are one to one. Um, so there you go. Uh, okay, um, I think that's it for the Axis combat. So it's going to be all allies all the time now until we do a German reaction at some point. Uh, we pull the American action. Um, I think we will do a move so we can try to figure out what to do and get some reinforcements. So uh, I will take care of that off camera. We'll roll for the uh, reinforcement number. We rolled just a two. And it looks like in terms of the formations we have, um, that is one, two, three. Oh, okay. So there is just two anyway. So that makes it easy, plus some asset markers. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay, I will take care of the American movement, and uh, we'll be we'll be back. Okay, here we are after the American move. We're having it be a little tricky um, getting situated where we're making sure that the Germans can't do something sneaky and get behind our lines. So we're sort of um, kind of in a weird state, and you can see I'm like I'm avoiding spreading out. To, to kind of provide um, a space where the Germans can attack something singularly. I'm keeping divisions together. Um, it does mean I have to watch out for cases where the Germans could try to come behind and encircle American units to keep them from attacking and all of that. So kind of weird. I think me focusing so much down here has really slowed down my ability to, uh, to knock... Cherbourg off balance. So that's a tricky thing that we're dealing with. Um, right now, I don't think there's much the Germans want to do for reaction. I think they want to wait and see what else happens. So we'll go to the cup. We'll pull it. We get another American mover combat. I think in this case, we have got to do combat. Um, and I think this one uh, kind of has to be um, oh, we can't do a prepared offensive on a shower turn. Dang. Okay, yeah. Uh, American combat. Um, let me do all that off camera. We'll see what we get. What I really want to do is figure out a way to get through here and create that isolation. If we can just get, you know, some Zox projected around here, um, that would actually be enough. So we'll see what happens. Okay, here we are after the uh, American combat. Um, you can see we technically we've not isolated Cherbourg, but we're basically on the precipice and all it's going to take is an American move. So I think I need to do the reaction if only to try to stall that from happening. If I select the 243rd and I move like this, and in fact, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, that... Uh, that won't be enough because these guys will just snap it there. Um, so, do I have any choice right now? Um, maybe I don't play reaction. And maybe we just wait. Uh, it, it's at the point, there's almost nothing we can do. Because even if I try to come up here, this guy just has to go... One, two, three, four, five, six, and then that would project a Zoc here. That would isolate the peninsula. So I think that's all she wrote, or that's all we can really hope for at this point. Um, so we'll pull the next shit, and uh, we'll see what we get. Uh, we're going to pull the Commonwealth Combat. Um, not a whole lot to do. Um, I think we've got some combats up here. And maybe around here, but probably not. So let me take care of that quick. Okay, Commonwealth Combat, we had one up here. We got an EX result, so we eliminated some, some Germans, which was nice. But um, we do have a lot of beat-up guys, a lot of single-step British units there now that um, yeah, could get worn out. But we're awfully close to being able to shut down some of the... Uh, the German uh, uh, formations in that region, sort of an outflanking position. We could send some guys off map and kind of shut down some of the uh, 
the exit points on the map. So we'll look at that. Um, only uh, chits left are going to be British and German, or British and American, a British move and a American uh, probably move. Um, so do we react yet is the question. Um, and if we react, where do we go? <laughs> How far do we go? Um, uh, I guess we wait. We wait still. Uh, we do draw the American Mover Combat. They are going to do this as a move. And so, um, let me take care of that off camera. You're going to imagine we're going to see the uh, peninsula get cut off here. Okay, here we are after the American move. You can see we have, you know, basically successfully cut off the peninsula. So that is, um, let me double check, that is the case. Um, and so, uh, the last move, let's see. Is there anything else I want to do? I think what I'm going to do actually is have this move right there and then have a move there so that uh, it's a spreading out a little bit, which is dangerous, but it just keeps a weird thing where uh, you could try to say that they're not isolated um, because you could trace. Well, no, I guess that wouldn't wouldn't really matter if you project the Zoc here so these guys can actually stay together it doesn't really matter um, yeah the supply line would have to go like sneak through here and end up getting past these Zocs which they're not going to be able to do and there's nothing that the Germans could just stop that so there you go. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else I can do. Um, guess we could have, I guess we're, we should do a reaction. What? What matters here is if I play the reaction chit, um, I think the isolation happens as soon as we play that chit. At the start of every German action round, the reaction chit is an action round. And if we don't use, I'm trying to say, if we don't react at all, we delay it, I think. Um, Okay, so we can, as the Germans, we can avoid, we can actually choose not to react at all, and that actually delays the isolation, um, but we're going to have a bunch of units get picked off anyway. Um, so it's a matter of, do we try to stop the British from getting well-situated uh, elsewhere. That I'm not sure about. Um, I think we just let the British do their movement and we just keep the isolation from happening in Cherbourg, um, so that we at least delay that a little bit longer and maybe, uh, I don't know, I don't know. We'll just do that. We'll give up the reaction shit and hope for the best. It's probably a mistake, but um, I'll, I'll take care of the British movement and we'll come back. Okay, so <laughs> the British move was conducted. We're pushing up against that last stronghold in the upper right. Um, but you'll notice I made another change. Uh, so here's the thing. 
units that are not in the Cherbourg box but are over here and can't trace a, can't trace a supply line, and the important thing is Cherbourg is not a supply source, would suffer attrition. And all of those units that were left were single step units. So I did elect to use the German reaction after the British move as the final action of the turn, that is legal to do. And upon it being the beginning of a German action round, we denoted this as isolated. The units were moved to Cherbourg, where they will at least not disappear due to lack of supplies. They're using some inherent supply in the city, um, and that is ultimately a better move. So uh, for the actual reaction, we pulled a unit out of uh, uh, the city Khan, uh, Kane, sorry, I don't know how it's pronounced properly. I'm awful at French. Um, well, do I want, yeah, I think we do. Um, pulling him out because he was in a kill box hex and that's really all that we're going to do. Everything else is just a little too difficult to determine how we solve the problem, but I think fighting as much of a delaying action as we can is good enough. Um, we have a potential to put these guys out of supply, but it won't really matter um, due to the, uh, the, the current uh, movement uh, and action and everything else going on. So just, just not quite enough, but uh, you know, I think right now with the Cherbourg defense at, let's see, 12, 14, 22. <laughs> Uh, 22, it's not going to take much for the Americans to go into Cherbourg, shut that down, and then start bringing the guys back down south. Um, they do have to keep in mind that, like, they're going to have to pull off or will want to pull off the airborne units. Um, so it's a kind of a different game balance than we were at before uh, at the end of turn two, obviously. But uh, end of turn three, I mean, ultimately, we're still dealing with... Um, you know, the, the struggle, <laughs> uh, much harder than the last one. Uh, and during attrition, we do remove those remaining strongholds that were out of supply. So the only stronghold, strong point left on the map uh, is in the upper right, like I said, um, way over here. And then all the Ost battalions are gone. So all that's really left on the boards of the Germans are the tough, Tougher units, um, though they are weakened, uh, the Panzer, the, the SS units rather, um, are providing a lot of punch to kind of slow the Allies down and, and create something of uh, the ability to counterpunch and actually hold the line because, like, the Americans are not going to eliminate these guys. The best they could do is outflank them and put them out of supply, and right now there's still something of a decent line being held. Um and the Germans are going to hope to get more reinforcements. They still have plenty more that they could bring on, um, but it's going to be, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. So, um, before we wrap up, I don't think there were any other victory points that really apply or matter. Um, we got the destroyed paratrooper. Uh, the only other uh, eliminated American units were units that do not count for victory points. Um... We didn't capture Cherbourg yet. We'll get some victory points if we capture it next turn. On turn four is the Americans, which we probably will. And then that's really it. So the victory points are one to one, and we'll take it from there. So thank you for watching, guys. I realize it's probably a long video, but I did replay turns one and two, uh, and all of three, and um, we are at a, dis a different point in the game, obviously, and the introduction of German reinforcements is helping to slow down uh, the the Allies. The British have taken uh, their big city objective, but they're being slowed down kind of elsewhere, uh, but we'll see how hard uh, they can continue to hit the Germans to put them out of position. We'll, we'll see what happens. So, uh, Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for sticking through this one if you watch the whole thing. Uh, take care. Keep on gaming. We will see you in the next one for turn four of the game.